Now we have two guests with us. Uh, John Campbell is a medical expert. He's a retired nurse, and his YouTube channel has become an important resource for people seeking clarity about the coronavirus. He's with us from Carlisle. And we have Murtaza Ali Shah. He's the chief correspondent of Geo News. He reports on Pakistan, Britain, as well as Muslim and European affairs. He's joining us from London. Gentlemen, it's great to have you both. Uh, John, I want to start with you. How worried about are you about these uh, localized outbreaks that we're seeing? Yes, fairly worried is the answer. The virus has been declining for some time now in the UK, but over the past week or two, we've seen a gradual increase. But the increase is not even all over the country. There's particular areas where the increase is more prevalent. There's more of the virus in the community. And what the government is doing is moving to try and quash these increased localised areas. For example, Leicester's been closed down for probably three or four weeks now. A gradual reopening of Leicester starts on Monday. And now this Greater Manchester area, it's a contiguous area. There's Greater Manchester, Yorkshire, parts of uh, Lancashire that have now had to be closed down, unfortunately. And what the government are doing particularly, in combination with the local directors of health, is looking at the drivers of transmission. And a lot of the drivers of transmission in this area is caused by families socialising together, especially in multi-generational households. So the Office for National Statistics has shown that South Asians typically are more likely to live in multi-generational households than uh, other members of the population. And this is particularly a problem because it means that younger people will come into contact with their parents and their grandparents. And this is an issue because the older people are, generally speaking, the more they are at risk. Mm -hmm. And also the South Asian population has suffered disproportionately in terms of morbidity and mortality. So it's essential that we protect these vulnerable populations. Murtaza, let's come to you now, because we just heard there that there's been some numbers about South Asian communities. We know that there's been a lot of anger in places like Oldham and Bradford that have large Muslim communities who are now celebrating Eid. They can't meet up with their families to celebrate. I mean, how big of a blow is this? Well, you know, actually, uh, the UK health minister announced uh, that, uh, you know, today is going to be the lockdown, especially, you know, on the day of a uh, Muslim festival of Eid. It, it came as really a big shock and, and a disappointing news for nearly, uh, you know, between 800,000 to around, you know, 1 million Muslims who live in those areas of Greater Manchester, North and West Yorkshire. I mean, you know, there are huge pockets of Asian, uh, Pakistani, Muslim, Indian, Indian Muslim communities who actually were like, you know, just about 10 hours away from going out, hmm. offering prayers in huge numbers and start a day of celebrations, which is Eid. So that is why, you know, the, uh, I mean, uh, there was so much kind of misunderstanding which was pushed out by the government. There has been no clarity on why. I mean, what was the urgent need for the health minister to go out at nearly 10 o'clock at night when most of the people have gone to bed, go on Twitter? I mean, you know, I mean, most of people actually do not use Twitter. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just you know, a very small percentage of population which uses that. So that created a lot of confusion as well as huge anger. But it's very important to note here that this is the festival for which, you know, Muslims wait all year long and they had made huge preparations for it. Uh, they were, they had planned uh, meals together. They had planned celebrations. Families were supposed to meet, meet each other. Some had actually already left London to reach to these areas to be with families. But all of a sudden, you know, a break was put onto all of that. That has caused a very, uh, you know, huge, uh, uh, a lot of anger within the community as to why it has happened. You know, there is a very uh, overwhelming feeling within the community, within the Asian community, okay. that this is actually targeted at Asians, this is targeted at Eid, and this, this, this arises out of, you know, the very stereotypes that Asians actually live, three to four generations live together and they are more, more at risk, but actually that is not the case. Okay, John, I have to bring in you here because I saw you just shaking your, your head at that. I mean, what is yeah. your feeling? Is it fair to say that this is, is an Eid lockdown that's targeting specifically these communities? <laughs> Absolutely not. The, the data from the Office for National Statistics does show that Asians are much more likely to live in multi-generational households. That, that is documented by the Office for National Statistics. And to be fair, the government has been warning for some time that further lockdown measures may be necessary. 
And local directors of health for days and weeks before have been warning that this might be necessary. So to say this is completely unexpected is not accurate. There's been the possibility of this for some time. The local directors of health warned of this last Tuesday, for example, in various parts of that particular area. So it wasn't unexpected. But, but to, make, to make this into a racial issue or an Islam, a, a, a cultural issue is indeed unfortunate. We are fighting a life-threatening pandemic here. We have to look at the medicine. We have to look at the epidemiology. And I think to cloud the science with um, cultural issues is unfortunate. And indeed, cultural clouding has been a problem throughout this pandemic. And I've mentioned this quite a few times. We've seen it in the United States. We've seen it in Iran. We've seen it in Afghanistan. And now we're seeing it in the UK. And I think it's important we keep that out and stick to the science. This is about okay. saving lives. OK, Murtaza, I'm going to get your, your reaction to that in a moment. First, let's just listen to what the health minister, Matt Hancock, had to say. But unfortunately, the rates across the whole area were starting to rise, and, and, and not just in the more focused areas, like in Oldham, Blackburn, uh, um, and, uh, 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 and others, that, and Bradford, for instance, that we've been working on. So uh, that's why we had to take the action across the board. OK, so, Murtaza, we heard the health minister say this is due to a spike in infections. And, and John said it's unfortunate that there is something he called a cultural clouding. What's your reaction to that? Well, if you allow me some time to talk about it, I'll, give you, I'll start with giving you an example. I've been covering this story, and I did, it, I think, about seven or eight stories on it for my newspaper, The News International and G News. What happened a few days ago that the public health... I mean, if you, you know, the doctor is talking about, you know, public health bodies, statistics and all that. Two days ago, Public Health England, in collaboration with the Daily Telegraph newspaper, published a very sensational headline. And it said that, you know, British Pakistanis are responsible for 50% of the imported corona cases. And then, uh, I mean, that, you know, was story made headlines in the UK. There was scare that as if Pakistanis were bringing over corona from abroad. Then it turned out that there were only 30 cases. Only 30 cases which okay. came from Pakistan out of nearly 60,000. And those were, you know, basis of that, it was said that all Pakistanis, are, most of the, you know, imported cases are from Pakistan. Now, when I asked Public Health England if they had a comparative data with any other, for example, South Asian nationality or for that matter, any other nationality, they didn't have any. So there was an element of targeting until today Public Health England has not explained why they said that. If you look at, you know, since in the last four months, at the cases of where the coronavirus the COVID-19, uh, you know, lockdown breaches have happened. Those have happened at the beaches, at the pubs, at the outer places. There have been musical festivals going on. Those are the areas which have been at really, really high risk of. Uh, and, and then, I mean, look, the, the government's advisor, uh, Mr. Cummings, what, uh, there was a whole hoax scandal about how he has been breaking. There have been government uh -huh. ministers who have been breaking these rules. So, but that okay. is not the case, the way government is, is trying to portray it. It is more about what the government suspects about a certain, you know, communities. I live within Asian communities, and I tell you this stereotype that Asian holds old, a household, three or four generations live together. Honestly, that is not true. It okay. used to be true maybe in the 70s, but not anymore. Okay, I have to bring John back in here. And John, to follow up on Mortasa's point, I mean, there's been a big heat wave right now. And, and I just want to bring in some images that, that we have of uh, Bournemouth, also Brighton and Poole. Uh, there were beaches during this heat wave. Uh, if we, I don't know if we have the images at the moment, but these, these beaches were packed. We saw some pictures, at least, of that today. So, I mean, are Britons really, in general, not just the South Asian communities, observing distancing and mask rules? Le less so than we would like. But to, to talk about the, the idea about Asian communities being particularly at risk, let me give you one particular example from Blackburn and Darwin. Now, the, the population in that area is about 30% South Asian. And there's been 114 cases in the past week, in the past two weeks, and 97 of those have been Asian. And the reason I'm concerned about that is Asian people have a greater morbidity when they get COVID-19 disease. They are more likely to be hospitalised. They are more likely to go to intensive care. They are more likely to develop acute respiratory distress syndrome. They are more likely to develop sepsis, and they are more likely to die. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that, and the Office for National Statistics has pointed to the multi-generational households, which are 
are there. That's a simple Office for National Statistics fact. There's no point to trying to disagree with that. And in my view, another major factor is lack of vitamin D because okay. darker coloured skin makes vitamin D more slowly. And it's a very important immunomodulating molecule. And I've been trying to get this message through for months now, but it just doesn't seem to be getting through. The socioeconomic stuff seems to get in the way of the medical facts. And that's okay. a problem to me. Very interesting discussion. And we're unfortunately going to have to leave it there. Uh, John Campbell, medical expert in Northern England. Murtaza Ali Shah, commentator on uh, Pakistani affairs in London. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.